Well, take out with Lisa Ling is a new show on HBO Max serving up a wide variety of Asian food as an appetizer, setting up a main course that includes deep and personal discussions about Asian American history, immigration, and culture across the United States. Here's a little taste. So many Asian American stories began in a family run restaurant. These are the little things that help you connect with your culture and share it. Take out highlights an assortment of Asian American restaurants in six cities across the country, including right here in New York. And joining us live to tell us more about the show is none other than the creator herself, Lisa Ling. Good morning, Lisa. Marisol, so nice to see you again. It's been so long. It's been a very long time. And we've both, I feel like we've both grown up. And I think it's, I also think it's because I think as women of color and women of color journalists, it was tough for us to find our space. You continue to reinvent yourself specifically with this show. So how did you come up with this idea and why now? Well, interestingly enough, uh, in the beginning of the pandemic, I was supposed to be doing another show for <laughs> HBO Max that was international and all travel got cut off, obviously. And so my team and I um, from Brooklyn, uh, part two pictures, we pitched a bunch of ideas to HBO Max and they bit on this idea of exploring Asian American stories and culture through the lens of Asian food. And, you know, it's interesting because there's so many Asian restaurants in this country. Chinese restaurants in particular are more ubiquitous than McDonald's, uh, mm -hmm. Pizza Hut, Taco Bell combined, <laughs> Wendy's combined. And these days, even if you live in the smallest towns in America, you're likely to find Japanese food or Vietnamese food, Thai food, maybe even Bangladeshi food. Um, and, and yet, we don't know the stories of those who work behind the mm -hmm. kitchen doors. And so um, this is really an exploration of that. And, and for a young Asian American girl who never had a day of Asian American history in school, who always felt like I just didn't quite belong, this show wasn't even a dream for me because I never even dreamt it could be possible. Isn't that crazy? And, and as to your point, I know this has been very a very personal project of yours, and I just want to show viewers another another clip. Darwin and his wife Lily have prepared a spread of traditional family recipes passed down through the generations. I used to be so embarrassed to have people come over to my house because mm. it always smelled like Chinese food. Yes, yes. It sticks to you that, that, you know, like penetrates your clothing. But I mean, what I would do to smell it now, you know? Lisa, can you talk to us about that moment? What was it like shooting that? And why was it important to include that in, in this show? Well, so my grandparents emigrated to the United States in the late 1940s, but my grandfather actually went to school in America. He went to NYU in the late 20s and got his MBA from the University of Colorado. But when they finally moved here, he couldn't get hired to work in finance because he was Chinese. And so he and my grandmother, who was also very educated, they ended up doing odd jobs and eventually scraped enough money together to open a Chinese restaurant, mm. which is the pathway for so many Asian immigrants. Neither my grandfather or my grandmother even knew how to cook at the time, but they would go on to toil wow. away in that restaurant seven days a week during every holiday. Um, every special occasion was spent in that restaurant. And that was the way that they were able to sort of eke out some semblance of the American dream. And that story is paralleled by so many Asian immigrants. And again, it's interesting because um, we now know over the last couple of years that Asians have been under attack because of what has been happening with COVID. But if you look back into Asian American history, and you do have to dig because it's not taught in schools, yeah. the scapegoating of Asian Americans has ha happened for centuries. Um, and so it's interesting that despite the discrimination that Asian people have experienced, restaurants somehow have been able to transcend that and become so pervasive in this country. It really does seem like everyone has an appetite for some kind of Asian food. And, and, and my thinking is if you love our food, just take the time to know our stories. Of course, there is a story behind every plate. And I love that. And by the way, don't watch the show on an empty stomach because I was starving. New York, <laughs> New York City is featured in episode four. You looked at the Bangladeshi American community. Uh, you went to Queens, Brooklyn, even New Jersey. 
But it was an episode of firsts, is that correct? Why was it an episode of firsts? It certainly was an episode of first for me. I mean, I have had the fortunate opportunity to have been able to travel all around the world, but this was the first time I'd ever had Bangladeshi food. Oh, wow. And New York City has a ton of Indian <laughs> restaurants. I mean, it even had a, 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 a street called Curry Row in the East Village. But people might find it interesting to, to know that many of those restaurants are run by Bangladeshi mm -hmm. people. And now there are Bangladeshi communities that are all throughout New York. And in fact, uh, the New York, New York City Council elected the first ever Bangladeshi Muslim woman, mm -hmm. Shahana Hanif, to the city council. Well, making strides. Tough question, but did you have a favorite dish after all that? There's a restaurant uh, in Jersey City called Kurai Kitchen okay. that is absolutely phenomenal. Again, this is my first time having Bangladeshi food. Bangladesh is known as the country of rivers. And the fish in this restaurant, you need to go have it. It is phenomenal. <laughs> I can't emphasize about it. I really think about it on a regular basis. I'm getting my easy pass ready. I'm going over that bridge. I'm going to Jersey City. Lisa Ling, congratulations on everything you've accomplished. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Marisol. Of Great course. to see you. Great to see you, too. You can check out Take Out with Lisa Ling right now on HBO Max. Jersey City. Yeah. I really? mean, Great. Great combo. Yeah, got to look for it. I got to look for it now.